Kentucky Brezza, the city bred SUV. <laughs> what a finish that was. Shashank Singh and Ashutosh Sharma had pulled off a heist in Ahmedabad the last time Punjab were playing. They almost pulled off a sensational miracle in Mulapur against Sunrisers, falling just short. 29 needed of the last over, but Punjab managed to get within two of Sunrisers' total of 182. Hyderabad winning by two runs to get their third win of the campaign. On Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Trick and Four Timeout. It gives us a lot to unpack. After a sensational finish with Tom Moody, Mitch McLennigan and Wasim Jafar. Anyone wants to talk me through that last over? Three wide, three dropped catches, everything happening. I think the left arm specialist should take that on, <coughs> given, that, given that the left yeah. arm specialist was bowling the last over. Look, I've got to tell you what, these guys weren't overly positive about the left armour. So, I just say he had a job to do and he had to defend 26 and he defended it nicely. Two runs to spare. Good on him. Are you sure his captain would be calling it defending it nicely, given that it went there? <laughs> well, you may, uh, I'll, I'll let you take, because you saw something during that over which yeah. was probably very key to his success. Yeah, what was, what was interesting in that, the early part of that over where it was starting to go pear-shaped, you know, what we did see is the, the leadership uh, of Pat Cummins come to the fore, and that was, he was very relaxed in a way with a big smile and if not sort of laughing, when he went up to his bowler that was under enormous pressure mm -hmm. uh, and just made it very clear, a simple plan without the pressure of the occasion and just settled the whole thing down. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, you see so often in that situation, mid-off come up from the boundary, mid-on come up from the boundary, even the wicket-keeper race up and say, we should have this, we should have that, bring third man up and put mid-wicket back mm -hmm. out. He was very clear, he was very relaxed, he was not at all, you know, frustrated with his bowler. He realised that he was under pressure and he made it easier for him. Yeah, this, what Tom brings up, came up at a point when the first two balls of that last over had seen two sixes, both off drop catches, parried over the line and two wides, which had got the equation down to 15 of four. Before we look at the other parts of this innings, Vasim, these two, Shashank and Ashutosh, you thought they did it once and it was amazing to watch, almost mm. freakish. This would have been even bigger had they pulled it off. Yeah, I mean, they nearly pulled it off. Uh, and it's nice, nice to see both of them uh, stand up again and, uh, you know, bring them closer to the victory again. Uh, it just, uh, you know, unfortunate. I won't say unfortunate, but the top three not firing, I think this was Punjab's game to lose. I mean, the, the situation they were in, uh, they should have walked, uh, you know, with a win here. Uh, but these two boys are, you know, uh, showing, you know, what uh, they are capable of. Yeah, you, you say you say that they should have walked it in. Uh, fair enough. At the halftime point, it was probably an underpass score. But a lot of credit needs to go to the way Boovey bowled in, in the power play and and the match up that the management um, from SRH and Pat Cummings uh, said with him to bowl that second over to Johnny Bairstow kind of put them in a whole heap of trouble, didn't it? It was I think they were three for twenty six at one stage in the power play. Uh, significantly behind the eight ball. And I think to get back to, I think when they were 105 overs to go, I think we all thought the game was done and dusted. So, yeah, massive partnership. Um, Ashutosh done it again. 31 mm -hmm. off 17 that last game. Uh, you know, Shashank. Shashank, you know, that's pretty impressive as well to back up that performance. So, good signs and a tough loss. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game of small small margins, isn't it? You know, that last ball in the... In the first first innings, which was a drop catch on the boundary, gets parried for six, and you know you've just sometimes those small moments throughout the match are, are what separates the two sides. To be fair, Sunrisers countered that twice in their last <laughs> over as well <laughs> with two they? parries of their Didn't own. They? They but it did close. it did boil down to 67 needed off the last four overs uh, by the time Ashutosh and Shashank started their thing. But why did it get there is because at the start of the innings, and let's start from the bowling. We spoke about Pat Cummins having bowled, operated more in the middle overs. He knows he's had the word over Besto in particular and also Shikhar Dhawan, also aided by the conditions that were on offer, decided to take the new ball and to instant impact. Yeah, I thought it was a smart move. Um, for mine, it was, the, um, it was the obvious move. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's a world-class bowler. If there is something in the surface, um, he's going to make uh, life difficult for any quality player and both Bairstow and Darwin are both quality players. Uh, both searching for runs though, so they were a little bit sort of vulnerable um, and uh, the, the way that uh, Bairstow was dismissed was, 
you know, 101 uh, Pat Cummins, you know, he, he could, you could nearly see that a mile away. I think we spoke off air and I said, um, oh, it might have been to, to Brian, mm. Brian Lara downstairs that, you know, it, it will take just a nice off cutter from uh, Pat to go through Bairstow's, um, you know, gap between his bat and pad, which is an area that he can be a little bit vulnerable. So, yeah, good, good uh, tactical captaincy. Um, and, uh, you know, at that point, the Sunrise has got a jump on the game. But in a way, both both innings mirrored each other to a certain extent. Mm. Um, you know, early wickets in both innings, and then there had to be some sort of recovery to uh, post a competitive total by some domestic uh, emerging stars, which is great. Yeah, yeah it was 70 for four were, uh, were Hyderabad when they were batting after 10, and Punjab was 66 for four. Uh, but just your word, Mitch, on how Bhuvi and Cummins operated with the new ball, setting the tone and putting Punjab as far back as they did? Yeah, well, when you, when you score a par that's under, under par, a total that's under par, you have to get off to a good start. And quite often when you're at the top searching for wickets, you can lose your radar. But there was a, there was a sense of coolness, a sense of calmness between the two most experienced bowlers in, in that Sunrisers outfit. And they came with some good plans as well. Their plans are Shikadawan to have Heinrich Klassen come up to the stumps um, after he got off to a slow start and have him look to try and force it um, from the crease because we know Shikadawan, when he's under pressure, he likes to dance down the wicket. So tactically, whoever came with that plan was uh, right on the money and it created a chance. And the glove work from Klassen there as well was uh, just a great example of good uh, and exceptional keeping standing up to the stumps for a fast bowler. Yeah, I can see a lot of questions coming up uh around Punjab's batting in particular, which we will be directing to the panel. Keep adding your questions in the comments section while we begin the conversation. And it is worth spending some time. That top order has to be a concern now, uh, Wasim, for Punjab. Uh, between Dhawan, Besto and Prop Simran, 15 innings in, 340 runs with just the one half century for Dhawan. Yeah, that is a concern, uh, without a doubt. Uh, Prop Simran hasn't, hasn't fired for a while. Uh, you know, Shikhar obviously... Uh, Hold such an important in in both uh, batting first or even chasing and and Bairstow as well. I mean, if those guys doesn't score runs, Jitesh is also searching for runs. I was again a little surprised uh, that they holded him back uh, till number seven. Uh, you know, which which is a surprise to me. Uh, but the top three needs to score runs. Uh, you know, they didn't had uh, the runs in the power play when you're chasing that kind of a score. Uh, I thought uh, Sunrisers bowled really well. They were one bowler mm. short because they used the impact sub as a batter. Mm. Uh, and I thought Pat Cummins used his bowlers really, really well. So, yeah, I mean, the top three needs to fire if Punjab uh, needs to win more games. Yeah, I can see a lot of excitement around uh, the efforts of Ashutosh and Shashank at the end. A lot of uh, viewers pleased with the rise in number of Indian finishers. Let's see how much the, they can carry that form forward. But, Tom, uh, if Mulapur is assisting swing with the new ball as much as it is, do Punjab need to recalibrate or reconsider their batting? Well, they've, they've got the best players out there at the moment, but they're not scoring runs. Um, but I'm led to believe that Livingston is going to be fit by the weekend. Uh, I read some sort of news bite that that was going to be the case. So you'd imagine as soon as he's fit, he'll come into the side. Um, but... You know, obviously Johnny Bairstow's form is a, is a real concern at the top now. He's had five games without really mm -hmm. firing. And I think five games is a fair number to make a, an assessment on whether you need to move on or not. Uh, too often players only get two or three games and suddenly you're out. But I think five is a is pretty generous sort of uh, measure on where someone's at. Mm -hmm. So maybe they need to reconsider, uh, you know, his position and how they, they look to do that, whether it's a straight swap with Livingston or not, or, or what they do, but they certainly need their batters firing. And it needs to be led by Shikha Darwin. You know, he's a, you know, he's a 500 runs plus, uh, you know, IPL man, and he has been for many, many years. So I'm sure he'll, you know, find that form again. And if he can lead with the bat, that'll be really important for him. They do have Riley Russo available in the ranks as well. Is that a direction you'd consider? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, it's... You'd have Raza in the side if you're going to use both facets, his bowling and his batting. So the consideration would be if they, if they think with these guys coming in and finishing well and 
not needing to use Raza with the ball. And their home conditions are going to be like this, which look like a very good batting track. Then Riley Rousseau really comes in the conversation as a, as a replacement for Johnny Bairstow. At the top, he could come in and bat at number three. Um, he's a good cleaner of the ball on, on, on even pace tracks, and that's what we've seen so far. Um, and then Livingston just comes in for Raza in that middle order. But uh, it's just, he's just, uh, Riley Rousseau is just a, an attacking player, right? He just gives you that other option at the top if you want to give Johnny a, a rest. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot more positives to out of that batting performance tonight than, than negatives, to, to be fair. Great. Let's dive into some of the questions you're sending in. Kula Tumani S asks, Nitish Reddy, Shashank Singh, Ashutosh Sharma, Mayank Yadav, the Indian in the IPL is going great guns. This is exactly why the IPL is played. What does the panel think? I think it's a very good thing. Uh, you know, it does give them a you know brilliant platform to to showcase their skill. Uh, and I do feel that sometimes the uncapped players go unnoticed. Uh, you know, they do put in a lot of hard yards in the domestic cricket, but only the uh, standout performances in the T20 tournament. Uh, those guys are only picked. But there are plenty of others who are you know can easily get picked. Uh, but I do feel happy for these guys. You know uh, that. They're putting the hard yards and they're getting, they're reaping the rewards. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of murmurs around whether this impact start, sub mm -hmm. thing is here to stay. And I guess we have to identify that we wouldn't have seen Ashutosh Sharma if it wasn't for the impact sub being introduced mm -hmm. into this. Yep, it is detrimental to, to developing all-rounders, but uh, we've seen two impact innings from Ashutosh Sharma in a row and we wouldn't have seen him in, in IPLs gone by. Sarvesh Joshi asks, what was the reason behind so many dropped catches today? Was it because the players were finding it difficult to sight the ball or was it just pressure? I don't think it was pressure. They're used to taking uh, catches under pressure. You know, the stadium is only half full at, you know, at that and there's plenty of stadiums that are packed and, you know, with ten times the volume that's on offer um, at uh, this evening's game. So I, I just think it may well be um, the lights, quite often the height of the the light towers can really have an effect on your outfielding catching. Um, so without having been to that stadium, you know, maybe the lights aren't as high as what some of the others are around, uh, not only in India, but yeah. around the world. And that can make outfield catching tricky. Plus as well, um, if you look at all the other stadiums around the traps, that um, this is one of the ones which doesn't have a roof. So, so you get that black background quite often and the ball can disappear and, in the night sky quite quite regularly. So when the stadium's and you've got the roof over, the, um, it kind of keeps the lights in. It makes it a little bit easy to see. So that, that could be another factor as well. Lots of questions coming in around Arshdeep Singh as well, who took four for earlier in the day. Uh, the question to everyone on the panel, does Arshdeep absolutely have to be in India's T20 World Cup squad? He's, he's in the discussion. Uh, I'm not... Uh, Entirely sure yet, uh, because his death bowling is, is still not there, uh, you know, to the liking. Uh, Bumrah is definitely there, without a doubt. Uh, but the second bowler, uh, not too sure. But he, he did bowl really well today. Yes, Sarvesh, in a similar direction, is Arjdeep India's best left-arm bet for the T20 World Cup? Yeah, at the minute. Um, look, I think there's positive signs. We touched on it that um, we want to see him with the new ball. He's a, he's a threat at the top with some swing when that's around. And the conditions today helped that, and he was exceptional at the top and got the breakthroughs early. What I did like about him at the death today is he had a clear plan. Um, he, he set a field and he bowled to that field. And, yep, sometimes you're going to miss and you're going to bowl the odd full toss that, that gets uh, put away. But I thought I liked the angles that he created to the right-hand batsman in particular. And I thought it looked like he was thinking about it properly. All right. Vijayinder Nala has a question for Tom Moody. Do matchups work more in the mind of players than on the pitch? Um, I think matchups do work, but there are the odd occasion uh, that teams get a little bit too obsessed with matchups and not trusting and backing, you know, whether it be a left arm spinner against a left hand batter or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, I think it's important you sort of drill down deep into the analytics to find out exactly what is working, what's not working. And if there's a real standout uh, point, whether it be Pat Cummins bowling to Johnny Bairstow, for example, that's a classic matchup. You you can't ignore it. Uh, you need to sort of embrace that and say, well, that's absolute common sense. Why wouldn't we take that 5% advantage going into the second innings? All right. 
that is a lot of questions coming in. Uh, keep them pouring, we will continue to take them to our panel throughout this season on uh, time out. But for the moment, let us switch to our rapid fire review of this thriller which has gone by Hyderabad's way eventually. Question 1 to you, Wasim, first impressions of Nitish Kumar Reddy's game? Well, he, he was impressive. Uh, you know, he does possess a very good hitting ability and to come in and perform in that kind of situation uh, for a youngster, 20 year old, to bat like that and, and give them a respectable total, uh, full credit to him and looks, looks a very good potential going forward. Mitch, is Arshdeep Singh nearing his best bowling form again? Yeah, I think he's getting back to where he, we expect him to be. I thought we saw movement up the top, he swung the ball nicely, uh, had some good plans and, and his death bowling was much better than we've seen um, in the last few games. So, good signs for us, Deep Singh. To you, Tom, Hyderabad's batting approach in tough conditions, high risk for high reward? Yeah, I don't think they're going to change their uh, batting style. I think that's the blueprint for this season. Uh, they've got the personnel to be able to execute that. Um, and I, I think that uh, quite often when you have a challenging conditions, if you're taking the game on, you can really throw the opponent off. And I felt they got a competitive score today. We're going to go back to the first innings for what could have been a turning point in the game. Mitch to you, Harpreet Brar's over for 22. Did that cost Punjab the game? Oh, yeah, it's very difficult to, to put the blame just on that over. Uh, look, I thought it was very good hitting. Um, I think at that point there was probably another couple of options that could have been bowled. Harpreet Brar's first few overs hadn't been to his liking. And, and sometimes you just got to say, well, Brad, today you're only going to bowl three overs and we'll bring someone else on. Next to you, Wasim, should Punjab consider playing Russo for best? Uh, possibly. Uh, they've got uh, Atharva Taide also sitting, who, did, who had a good IPL last season. Uh, Prop Simran is another case, uh, whether you want him you know, to continue playing. Uh, Riley Russo could come in and bat at three and Atharva Taide or Prop Simran could open. Tom, what is the most impressive aspect of Pat Cummins' as captaincy? I think uh, Pat Cummins uh, has shown great uh, calmness under pressure. Uh, he seems to have a very relaxed environment around him and he is a great example of that this evening in that last over where he went up to an Unak Cup and, and just sort of calmed the, the waters when it was looking very, very dangerous. All right, and finally to you, Mitch, a win tonight, but could Hyderabad consider Umran over Unat Kurt? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think you've, you've got it back in Unakat. I think he's been good up until this last over that we saw tonight. His variations uh, lend into the way that Pat Cummings wants to play, and, and particularly on their home ground in Hyderabad. He's got the skills to execute and get performances on that ground. Right, that has us covered on the game. Thank you for your thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, it got very close there. Let's see how close it got <laughs> in our impact predictor. It's time to head into the impact zone. <laughs> and I get right. worse. Oh. <laughs> McLennigan. <laughs> we'll come to that later because this is as close as it has got ever on this impact <laughs> predictor so far. Tom Moody just pipping. Wasim Jafar, 114 is a fairly high score. Arshdeep giving 100 of those mm. points. But Tom Moody's all-round compliment. Sikandar Raza getting some runs. Uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar getting a lot of points, including that maiden, which rated highly on the impact, Tom. Mm. Yes, yeah, very nice indeed. I'm very pleased with that. I feel sorry for Wasim. <laughs> uh, not so much for Mitch, but um, <laughs> yeah, look, uh, I was lucky. I had three, th three players that contributed. Um, and Mitch had three that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is quite consistent, we, uh, isn't he? He's very consistent. He's on a roll. Yeah. You know, He's I'm, on a roll. I've I think, improved. I think you should have a day off tomorrow. We can't, have, we can't have a hat trick of negatives. <laughs> Jeez, could you imagine? Hey, <laughs> no, you'll be good look, tomorrow. I'm used to you'll starting the tomorrow. season off poorly. Uh, we'll come back from this. Yeah, let, let's hope it's not a hat trick. <laughs> we also have the points table. Let's see uh, how things are shaping up. In the IPL, not just our leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, we have this other tournament we also focus on. <laughs> far the IPL. more important. <laughs> and uh, that's what today's result means. Hyderabad and Punjab were locked at two wins and two losses apiece. Hyderabad now join that bunch of teams who are on six points. Kolkata, Lucknow, Chennai just above them on net run rate. Punjab at the moment level with Gujarat with 
two wins and three losses after five games. Rajasthan, the only team unbeaten so far. They will be in action uh, on Wednesday evening when they host Gujarat Titans. And we will show you your points table when we begin proceedings on Wednesday <laughs> uh, with the hope that Mitch McLennigan avoids the hat-trick. Wow. Jeez. And... Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> not, running too, not running too hard at the moment. All right. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your company. Through this evening, gentlemen, Wasim Jafar, Mitch McLennigan, Tom Moody, look forward to your company. Uh, and you be sure to join us on Wednesday. Rajasthan versus Gujarat Titans is the game. Build-up will begin just before toss time on Maruti Suzuki Arena. Present the SPN Trick Info timeout. In the meantime, if you haven't already, go download the SPN Trick Info mobile app. It'll have you covered with all the thoughts from both the captains after what was the tightest finish we've seen so far, 23 games into the season. That does it from us this Tuesday evening. Thank you for your time. All new hot and techy breath up, the city bird SUV.